Help! I need a counter. Welcome to Life with David. I'm David and I'm repairing this transformer. I have to remove a bunch of wire from the coil to get to the, a blown thermal cutoff that's in the middle of the primary winding. I have to keep track of the number of turns that I take off so I can put the correct number of turns back on. If I screw up, the transformer won't work right. Back in the day, counters were mechanical devices that used rotating dials and gears to keep track of the number of revolutions. However, I don't have any right now. But I do have an Arduino, some wood, some other electrical parts. So why don't you join me and we'll see if we can make out a counter out of the stuff that I've got. My plan is to use a photocell that is alternately covered and uncovered by a wooden disc. That's pretty simple, but with only one sensor, the count would increase by one regardless of the direction. If I had to reverse directions because of a jam, the counter would lose count. However, if I use two sensors, I could sense the direction the disc is turning and decrement the count if I had to reverse the rotation. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools and electronic gear. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Now let's get started. First we have to cut out the disc. I cut out a one and three quarter inch hole from an eighth inch piece of hardboard. It's important to use a backing block to get a nice smooth cut. Also slowly feed the hole saw to keep the cut clean and avoid catching the hardboard. Next, remove the disc from inside the hole saw. It's difficult to do, so take the hole saw out of the drill press and then use a nail in the back to try and push it out. You may have to uh, work back and forth on this uh, a bit to get it out. Once you get the disc out of the hole saw, you'll see that the edges of the disc are still a little ragged, so smooth them with a the file. Next, using a bolt through the disc to hold it on the backing block, drill a couple of holes side by side to create a small slot for the photocells. The slot should be long enough that both photocells can be uncovered at the same time. Clean up the slot using a small rat tail file. Next, let's cut out a base for the sensors. I just used a piece of 3 inch uh, plywood and uh, cut a small piece that I could mount the disc on. Drill the bearing hole for the disc in the base using a bit that is the same size as a bolt that will be used as the disc axle. Thank you. 
Then mark the location of the photocells on the base using a pencil through the slot in the disk. Next, use a drill bit that is the same size as the photocells to drill two holes next to each other in the base. Insert the photocells into the holes and make sure everything lines up. With the photocells installed in the holes and flush with the front of the base, Glue them into place using my favorite, hot glue. Also glue the disc onto the bolt that's going to be used as the axle. Then we'll remove the nut that's on the other side of the disc. Finally, assemble the disc to the base and make sure that you can see the photocells through the slot in the disc. Now we're ready to hook up our counter electrically. Let's start electrically connecting the counter. First I'll tie one lead of each photocell together and attach a wire that will go to the ground on the Arduino. Then I'll attach wires to each of the other photocell leads. Finally, I'll cover the entire assembly with hot glue. Here's a simplified wiring diagram for our counter. Our two photocells, P0 and P1, are tied to pull-up resistors that are 33K ohm each. And those are tied to the 5 volts coming from the Arduino. The common leg is tied to ground so that when the photocells are covered they have almost infin infinite resistance, which means that the pull-up resistors will pull the level to close to a, a 1. That will be close to 5 volts here. However, when this is exposed, the resistance comes goes to about 7,000 ohms, which will drag the logic level to about 1 volt. And that will show up as a 0 on the Arduino. Let's look at the high level logic for our counter. If we refer back to the diagram, you'll see there are two sensors, P0 and P1. P0 is on the left, P1 is on the right. Going back to our flow diagram, we'll first start out by reading the sensors, P0 and P1, and then we'll look, check to see if they are both uncovered. 
if if they are not both uncovered will continue to go through this loop and wait until they both are uncovered. With them being uncovered that's when we start the process of counting a revolution or decrementing the revolution. The next loop that we'll look at is is P0 or P1 covered, meaning the disk has moved in so that the slot covers up one or the other of the sensors. Whichever one is covered up first tells us which direction the the disk is rotating. So if one or the other of them is covered, we pull out, jump out of this loop, and we go ask the question, is P1 covered? If P1 is covered, that means the disk is moving clockwise, and therefore we'll increment the counter, and we'll go back to start reading the sensors. If P1 is not covered, that means it must be P0, and that m means that the disk is moving counterclockwise. And so in that case, we'll decrement the counter, and we'll go back to reading the sensor and checking again to see whether or not both P0 and P1 are uncovered. Let's talk a bit about the sketch for this project. We'll start out by setting up three global variables, photo 0, photo 1, and count. Photo 0 and photo 1 indicate whether or not the sensor is covered or uncovered, and count is the number of revolutions. Then we'll set up the serial communications so we can check our status using the serial monitor. And then we'll get into the main loop. We'll use a flag to determine whether the sensors have been covered, both sensors have been uncovered, or one or more sensors is covered up. We'll initially set that flag equal to zero, meaning that the one or more sensors are covered up, because we don't know right now. Then we'll read the value of the sensors using this function down here. We'll initially set the value equal to 1, which means that the sensors are uncovered. Then we'll read the value of the sensors using an analog read for pin A0 and A1. After a short delay to let everything stabilize, then we'll check the value to see whether they are unco or covered up. If the value is high, that, that means that the sensors have been covered and so we'll set the value equal to zero meaning that they're covered up and we'll return that information back into the loop through the global variables. We'll drop into a while loop and the, this loop says okay both sensors are uncovered and if they're both un uncovered we're going to continue to keep going through this loop reading the value of the sensors and setting this flag equal to one which means both sensors have been exposed until one or the other sensor is covered up. When that happens its value will drop to zero and will it'll drop out of the while loop and we'll check it with this logic here which just basically says if this flag is one meaning both sensors have been uncovered and now photo zero is covered up, then that means that the clock, uh, the disk is going counterclockwise. And if that's the case, we'll go ahead and decrement our revolution count, and then we'll clear that flag. However, if photo one is the one that was covered up, that means the disk is going clockwise, uh, and we'll increment the revolution count, and again clear the flag and then we'll go ahead and we'll print our results out and that way we can watch what's going on as we're uh, winding or unwinding our counter. Okay, here's the completed device. We've got the counter is over here. I've got a little mandrel for the uh, transformer coil sitting here. Right now I've got a light that's shining, a little flashlight that's shining on the sensors over there. I've got a drill here with a take-up spool. And we've got our, uh, our uh, uh, monitor, serial monitor running. So let's try seeing if I can unwind some of these coils. It's the first time I've tried it, so let's see how it works. Kind of line things up and slowly start to move it. I think I'll have to put a little bit of tension on to keep it from unspooling too much, but as you can see we're counting pretty well.
already up to 30, 37 or 38 rotations. And there's the uh, damaged uh, overload sensor. Well, I think this has been a very uh, worthwhile project. I have 310 revolutions from the outside into where I'm going to repair this, uh, replace this uh, thermal cutoff. I thought that was a pretty good project. I was able to accurately count the number of turns that I removed from the transformer coil. After I receive a replacement thermal cutoff, I'll be able to rewind the coil with exactly 310 wraps of wire and hopefully get the transformer back in service. Thanks for helping me build this project. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. And leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications when a new video comes out. Let's get together next time to make more things that I need from the stuff that I've got. See you soon!